So once we introduced the chain rule, we were at a point where we can handle the derivative of just about any function that you can think of writing down. Uh, there are a few, however, that we either don't know how to compute the derivative or we can do it, but it's a lot of work and we'd like a better method for doing so. Um, the standard example where we might run into trouble is the following function. Looks innocent enough. x to the power of x. So if you think about this for a second, uh, this is a pretty problematic example because, well, we know how to deal with powers, right? If this is a constant, we know how to take the derivative with the power rule. Um, if the base is a constant, we know what to do, then it's just an exponential function. We know how to take the derivative there as well, okay? Um, but here, both the base and the exponent are, are variables. So how do you deal with some of this? How do you compute the derivative? Um, we've already seen a bit of a hint because one of the things we did with the chain rule is we, we exploited the chain rule for taking the derivative of exponential functions to other bases. And in doing so, we exploited this fundamental fact that if you take e to the log of any function, because the exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other, they cancel out and they give you back your function. Okay? And that's useful in scenarios like this because if you have x to the power of x, right, that exponent, right, the, the thing that is useful with logarithms, right, the reason that people use logarithms is they they simplify things, right? Um, one of the things that logarithms do is, is because logarithms are a very slow growing function. If you have, let's say, some data that is rapidly growing uh, and you want to sort of calm it down so you can analyze it, sometimes you take a logarithm, right? You apply a logarithm, it settles everything down, and then you can analyze. But we also know that logarithms, they tend to simplify arithmetic operations, right? Multiplication becomes addition, right? Division becomes subtraction. Exponents become multiplication. So what we can do here is we can say, all right, I want to calculate f prime, right? So I want f prime of x. So there, there's two approaches for this, and I'm going to show you them both. So the first option is we let y equal to x to the x, and we take logs. So what happens? Well, the natural log of y will be equal to the natural log of x to the power of x. Okay, But here's where that log property comes in, because this, this exponent we can bring down and put it in front, okay? And that gets us to x times the natural log of x, okay? And now if we ignore the, the middle part here and we just say, well, the natural log of y is x times the natural log of x, we know how to do everything here, right? We want to take the derivative of both sides. Here we use implicit differentiation. Here simply the product rule, right? Because we've turned that exponent into a product, we know how to deal with derivatives of products, okay? So we take the derivative of both sides. So remember that for the derivative of the natural log, right? That derivative natural log of y, we get one over y, but implicit differentiation says you must also multiply by y prime, right? You have to take the derivative of the inside. That's just chain rule. Okay. On the other side, you can do product rule. So the derivative of x is just 1, so we have 1 times the natural log of x plus x times the derivative of log x, which is 1 over x. Okay. So we're pretty much done. What are we trying to find? We want f prime. So f prime 
Well, that's our y prime, right? So f prime of x, which is y prime, is equal to, well, we've got that 1 over y out front, right? So we've got to multiply both sides by y. So we multiply by y. We multiply by y, right? Cancel the y out. So we have y times natural log of x plus, well, the x's cancel, plus 1. You probably don't want to leave your answer like that, right? Um, if we started with a function of x, we should end with a function of x. We shouldn't have this y in there, but it's okay. We know what y is. y is x to the x. So this is x to the x times the natural log of x plus 1. Okay. Now you've got the derivative. So we'll pause here. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you one other method for computing this derivative, and then you can choose whichever one you like best.